Hello everyone and thank you for joining me today and I hope you're doing well. Today I'm out to do something a little bit different. I'm out doing landscape photography, which is something I do a lot. You'll know that if you watch the other videos on my channel. But I'm out to shoot exclusively with my Fuji XF 150-600mm to lens. So this brings opportunities, it also brings some difficulties using a lens of this extreme focal length for landscape photography. So I'll talk a little bit about that throughout the video and uh, see what I can get, hopefully get some nice shots. So I'm working on a scene at the moment off in the distance far behind me. I'm very close to 600 millimeters for this shot. So it's a shot I couldn't get without this lens. And while this lens brings great opportunities, being able to use such a focal length and compose your frame uh, in a manner you wouldn't be able to do with other lenses, there are some difficulties regarding composition as well. So if you're walking around with, for example, a wide angle lens, you're going to be taking in a lot of what's immediately around you and you can see that. But if you're using a lens such as this to take scenes that are much further away, it can be harder to spot compositions. Of course, that's not the only use for a lens with such a focal length. You can always just use it to frame scenes that are much closer, uh, a bit tighter. Uh, I can use it for a variety of things. You can be quite creative. But regardless of how you're using it, composition can be a little bit difficult with a lens offering such a focal length. But it does have its benefits and one of those as I've said is the ability for me to capture this scene behind me today. So it's probably not going to stand out very well on the video camera, it's far away and the light's a little bit flat at the moment. But there's just a rocky outline coming in from the right and with, a, with an observant eye I spotted a couple of very small trees, I think it's one or two trees close together but uh, the light hitting their slender trunk just caught my attention. And I just like how they sit on that rocky hillside. And all before it and beyond it is just a sea, an ocean of trees. And there's been some interesting light going on in the background as well, sort of painting the landscape. So it's just a question of me being a bit patient. My composition's framed up and trying to capture the scene in optimal light. On another date I captured this scene again but this time in a much warmer light. I like both images for different reasons, which do you prefer? So the lights went a bit flat at the moment, but hopefully some of these clouds, although there's an awful lot of them, will give way and we'll get a little bit of light, but I'm enjoying the hike regardless. So I just wanted to stop briefly and talk about a couple of points we need to consider if we're carrying a lens such as the XF 150 to 600 millimeter with us on long landscape photography hikes. Uh, if we're shooting from our car, perhaps we don't need to think about these things if we're shooting close to our car. But if we're carrying it long distances, we need to consider the weight of the lens and also the size. The size is something many people wouldn't actually think about. I'll get on to that in just a minute. But if I'm doing some wildlife photography, I'm often walking a fair distance, but I'm not carrying a tripod and I'm happy with the lens around my shoulder, on the shoulder strap, shooting handheld all day. That's not an issue to me. But if I'm out doing landscape photography, as I say, with a, a tripod and there could be long periods of time between me taking shots and I'm not constantly looking for wildlife, I often want to have the lens in my backpack, making it easier to carry. 
So we need to think about the weight and what I'll do is decide I'm just out to shoot with this lens. I'll keep it permanently attached to my Fuji camera body and I won't take any other lenses with me. So the weight is very manageable, not a problem uh, when it's in the backpack. The other thing that we need to think about is the size and I think some people may not consider this but it's quite a large lens. Uh, it's very reasonable weight and size for the focal length range it offers, but regardless, it takes up a fair bit of room. And uh, it's a fair size, and obviously if you're keeping it attached to your camera body, there's a fair length there with the two things combined. So you need to check it actually fits in your backpack. Uh, some people I know like to carry smaller backpacks just to save weight. And if you're planning on putting this set up into your backpack, please check out the size of the, the lens with your camera body attached and see if it's actually going to fit because you don't want to be carrying it around your neck or shoulder in a strap for long landscape photography hike. So a couple of things to consider there, but yeah, the weight's not an issue for me in my backpack with no other lenses, it's absolutely fine. But anyway, onwards we go and hopefully the light will improve. So it's been quite a mild day today. The temperature has been quite high, about 14 degrees. But now that I'm high up amongst the mountains, it really is cold. And uh, there's quite a strong wind as well. It was very calm lower down, but as is often the case, once you gain height, the wind picks up. So hence why I've got my video camera very low to, to stop it from blowing over. But I found another shot here which I need to take from this position to get some nice separation in the elements in my frame. And I wouldn't be able to do it, I wouldn't be able to capture this image without such a long focal length. So again, I'm pretty far in, I think roughly 450 millimeters. And I'm shooting a scene off in the distance. As I spoke about earlier, the light is very flat, but there's some really nice soft light uh, falling on this sort of area of water, a small lake off in the distance. And there's some really nice reflections as well. So again, this lens is letting me capture an image which I wouldn't be able to take otherwise. If I was to move closer, uh, I would lose elevation and the elements would merge together. So I'm quite pleased to find this shot, especially considering the conditions. So the lens is working quite well. Um, it's allowing me to get a number of landscape images that I wouldn't otherwise get. But another thing you need to be mindful of using a lens with such a focal length is that the slightest vibrations are going to make your image soft. So as I said, the wind is picked up. I need to be very aware of wind catching the lens, causing very soft uh, or very subtle vibrations. It's enough to ruin the image. The other thing is if you put on the lens hood, it's a very large open area for wind to catch. And I'm sort of shooting into the wind. It's just coming maybe slightly from my right, so it would really catch the lens hood. So you need to think of these things. Now, a few of you may be saying, what about this, the strap bouncing off the tripod? Well, that's on for me holding this lens when I'm doing wildlife photography. Rest assured, I'm keeping this very secure when I'm taking my images. I'm also using my uh, shutter release cable here. So again, so many opportunities are opened up with a lens such as this, but you do need to be mindful of a few things to try and get sharp images. So you'll no doubt be able to see behind me here, this sky is absolutely filled with cloud. There are clouds everywhere, lots of dark grey menacing clouds, and it's actually quite atmospheric to look at, but unfortunately it's robbing the landscape of getting any nice light. There are just hints trying to touch the landscape in various areas, but they really are hints of light, very, very subtle light, and I think I'm hoping for light more than expecting it, but you never know. 
However, I do think there's an opportunity to take an image over in this direction. Again, I'm going to need to use a very long focal length, uh, 400 to 600 millimeters, I think. There's a, a nice peak, a path leading up to it, and there's a little bit of color uh, forming in the sky off in the distance behind it. No light on the land, but a little bit of color in the sky. And because it's so far away, the shot I'm wanting to take, I am slightly concerned about one thing, and it's the last thing I like to touch on in this video, which I'm aware of when shooting with a super telephoto lens uh, at scenes that's far off. And that is the effects of atmospheric conditions on your images. It can certainly make your images come out soft. And as I said earlier, just because you have a long focal length, you don't need to shoot things that's far away. You can shoot things that's close up. But if you are shooting uh, far away, just be very aware of atmospheric conditions, haze. Uh, you certainly don't want to be shooting through mist and so on, because it's really going to make your images soft. I was doing a lot of wildlife photography over summer and even shooting birds in the sky in the middle of summer, not particularly far away from me, and uh, I even noticed the effects of haze uh, on the subjects that I was shooting. So it's just something to be aware of uh, because it certainly does have the potential to make your images soft. And some people question if there's a fault with their lens or if they've not been focused properly but it can be due to atmospheric conditions. And I'll show you a little video clip of a scene, I was, a nice scene that I was taking a video of, uh, but that was suffering from the, the atmospheric conditions. So I'll show you that just to, to illustrate what I'm talking about. But anyway, I'm going to get set up and uh, take this shot and I'll show you it in just a second. I've given it some time and I really don't think there's much chance of getting some nice light on the landscape. We're getting ever closer to sunset. The sky is grey, it's full of clouds, so I think I'm going to call it for today. But I've enjoyed my time out shooting with the Fuji XF 150-600mm lens. It's a fantastic lens. It's something that I'll continue to use uh, from time to time for my landscape photography. It's very nice to have that long focal length available. It's obviously not something I'll take out on every landscape photography trip, but it's nice to carry in the car if you can do that or take out on trips and, and see what you can come up with. I really do hope you've enjoyed watching. If you have, please take a second to hit the like button. Consider subscribing to my channel if you're not already subscribed and hopefully I'll see you in my next video.